Okay, so the first thing I see here is that it's asking which angle has a measure closest to 75 degrees. So remember, when you see this little circle above a number, that's just telling you to say degrees right there. <clears throat> just like if you saw a dollar sign next to a number, you would say $75. Here you say 75 degrees. So as I'm reading this word problem, I should go ahead and circle 75 um, because that's my number that I'm dealing with. And then there's actually one more key word. It's closest. So None of these options, none of these protractors might actually equal 75, but I'm still going to look for whatever one is closest to 75. Okay, so if I'm thinking about what steps I need to take for this problem, I'm actually going to have to read all four of these protractors and go ahead and label their degrees so that I can figure out which of these four protractors is the closest. So I'm just going to start with A. And let me go ahead and zoom in real close to A because I realize the numbers are pretty small here. Um, okay, so for A, one problem we have when we look at protractor is we actually have two sets of numbers. We talked about this a little bit in class. We have the inner set and the outer set, right? So I'm going to go through how to pick those, but first I want to differentiate. I want to be able to tell the difference between the two, right? So my inner set is going to be inside the protractor. So that would be what I'm highlighting in blue right here. I'm going to go ahead and highlight that inner set. Okay, so that is one set of numbers that I can use. And if I'm going to use that set, I cannot use the outer set, which is right here above it. This is the outer set of numbers. So I won't do that for each of these options, but I wanted to show that right away that whenever you're going to measure an angle, you only want to use one of these sets. And here's how you can choose which set is best. So if I look at my angle, I have two rays, one here and one here, right? So I want to see which of these rays actually points to zero. And if I look at that, that would be this one right here, right? So since that's point at zero, that makes this quite a bit easier to solve, right? And that's the zero on the inner set. So now I'm going to ignore the, the set of numbers that is highlighted green because this ray is pointed to zero in the inner set. So now I want to go ahead and look up here, the second ray, what two numbers is this between? Well, I see 60 and I see 70. Okay, so we know that whatever degrees this is, this angle is going to be, it's going to be between 60 and 70. And one way I can see exactly what degree it goes through is I'm just going to kind of rip out a piece of notebook paper here because I just need a straight line. And I am going to line up this piece of notebook paper with that array and we'll see exactly where it goes through. Let's see. So if I put it right here, I see that it goes right through that kind of a uh, higher line right there, which is the halfway point between 60 and 70. If you think was halfway between 60 and 70, that would be, give you a minute to think, maybe you'll come up with the answer before I do, was halfway between 60 and 70, it would be 65 degrees, okay? So this angle is 65 degrees, and that's because we identified that this ray right here points right at zero. So once you establish that one ray points right at zero, all you have to do is find out what number does the second ray go through, and that's the degree of the angle, okay? So that's 10 away from 75, right? So maybe that might be closer, but we need to look at the other ones now. Okay, so let's look at B down here, okay? So again, we're going to be using the inner set. I won't bother with the high line, but you do see that this ray right here points right to zero. So let's look up here. Keeping in mind that we want to only look at the inner set of numbers, right? So I see that this ray is pointed between 100 and 110. Okay, so we know this is going to not be as close, right? Because these numbers are way away from uh, 75, but let's still, let's figure out exactly where it's pointing using that piece of notebook paper. And if I really line it up and try to see where it's going through, it's again right at that halfway point, okay? So halfway between 100 and 110 is 105. And remember, with word problems, a lot of time it's a process of elimination, right? So you want to ask yourself, once you figure this one out, what is closer, A or B? A is closer, right? So I'm going to go ahead and eliminate B. Okay, let's go to C. 
So with C again, we have one of the rays point toward the zero in the inner set of numbers. And this one is a little bit easier because I can see that this is pointed right at 70, right? And this is pointed right at 70, even if I extended that mark a little bit, which is another strategy. If I extended it, it'd be right at 70. Okay, so this is 70 degrees. Again, I zoom out. What is closer, 75, 65, or 70? And 70 is closer, so we're actually going to get rid of A. Okay, let's look at D. Okay, D is a little bit different. I'm going to ask, what is the difference? I'll give you a second to try to establish what that difference is. Okay, so the main thing I see here is that this ray is pointed toward the zero in the outer set of numbers. So here we're going to use a different set of numbers to actually measure what the degree of this angle is. So remember, we are no longer looking at this bottom set of numbers, and that's because this ray is pointed at the zero of the top set of numbers, right? So I'm going to follow that up, and we see that this ray right here is pointed between 70 and 80 of the outer set of numbers, right? So now I just want to use my paper to figure out exactly where this, this ray would intersect. So I do that, and I see that again, it's right at that middle mark, right? It's right at the higher mark, which signifies it shows that that is halfway between 70 and 80, which be halfway between 70 and 80 is 75 degrees. So if I zoom out, look at the big picture again, we see here that 75 degrees is because it's the exact same number, obviously, you know, closer to 75 than 70 is, even though they're both very close. So my answer to number one would be D. Okay, so, you know, just getting back into angles, um, this is this is where we start, right? Just being able to read these protractors. So what I'm going to do for y'all is I want you to go ahead and look at this problem and you can do this in one or two ways you can either pause this video so you can just see this problem and you can kind of work it out on your own notebook paper or you can um, access the class story this is actually the second um it, the pdf not the second but the pdf that is labeled number two for angles that's where this comes from and it's actually on page 13 of that pdf Okay, so I will actually um, link that in the post where I where I put this video. Okay, so you can go back there and print that out if you want the paper version. Um, if you don't have a printer, don't worry because it's right here. Again, just pause the video, um, look at this problem, and you can just kind of... I, I know you won't be able to hold a paper here to uh, see exactly where this uh, ray is intersecting, but that's okay. You can estimate and you'll still... Be able to get a correct answer through a process of elimination right first find where these two or uh, where where this ray goes uh what what two numbers it goes between basically okay and decide am i using the inner set of numbers or am i using the outer set of numbers um, if you have any questions please uh, make a comment on this video uh, in the class story and I can answer questions as we go okay but I want to see how many students will be able to answer this problem by tomorrow I'm going to try to do one of these videos to a day okay and tomorrow I'll go ahead and go over this one all right thank you guys um, awesome job if you watch this video um, you know kind of stay tuned because I my goal is to do at least three of these a week if not every day okay um, right now, they'll be posted to Class Dojo, but I do want to uh, make it clear that later we will be going to Google Classroom only. Um, so I would try to uh, log your child into Google Classroom or log into Google Classroom um, because next week that'll be pretty much all that we're using. All right, thank you guys. See you next time.